Right, we're still at Fort William, and it's all going off. It's all getting packed down. The vibe is coming down. It's coming to an end. Yeah, slowing down. But this is Ask, and uh, we're going to be answering your questions that you've been sending in on the hashtag AskGMBN and to ask at gmbn.com. Yes. And, of course, in the comment section down below the video. Yep. So you can also do that for next week's show. But let's get on with the questions you have sent us. First one here, Blake, is from Josh Key. Uh, he's wondering what the pros and cons are th of thick and thin grips. Ah, okay. uh, he rides mostly rocky trails. What grip should he get? What do you think about that? Well, it's a bit of a personal preference, I mm, guess. Yeah. But thicker grips, I run GD ones, the thick ones. Um, I guess the bigger the grip, I can take a little bit of that shock yeah. and all that. But it's personal preference, really. Yeah, it's one of those things that it's hard to suggest using a thinner or a thicker grip yeah. compared to what you used to without trying them. So I think it's maybe try something different, see how it affects your riding, your hand size, yeah. uh, your technique. Yeah. Um, that's the only way I'd say yeah. is a, a confident way yeah. of finding out if thick or thin grips are for you. But they are out there, so give exactly. them a try. Yeah, yeah. But do you know what they say about big hands? Big grips. Exactly. Next question from Paul Costa Grail. Um, how come Nino Scherter was racing with a GoPro oh, on his yeah. bike? Yeah. Um, Paul saying that he thought UCI had banned those, and if they're not banned, why don't we get onboard footage like you get on MotoGP, seeing the guys running around the corners, that down the good. descents? I would love to see that. Yeah, well, Imagine clearly, that. If, if Nino Scherter was racing with a GoPro on, they've That's clearly clear. allowed it. Exactly. Um, but it's a great point. It would, I like be, that. it would be awesome to see that ride in. Could be the future. Yes. Imagine seeing yes. that from the racing point. Oh. Yes, I mean, I'd love to see it. And, love and it. let's hope that that's something that's coming. Yeah. yeah. OK, next question for you, Blake. Joshua Powell, um, he races with XC clips. Uh, right. But what would increase his power output, training with flats yeah. or clips? Well, if you're racing in clips, why would you convert back to flats for training? I think for power output, it's basically your push pulling. I've yeah. ridden clips a few times, not yeah. much, but yeah. you push, you pull up with the one coming up, yeah. and you get more power like that. So why would you? I know. I would yeah. stay with clips. Yeah, I'd stay with clips too. I think you could definitely concentrate on your on your power in with and, flats. Yeah, yeah. But you could still do that on clips. You can. Um, the thing you can't do on flats is get that circular motion the happening and really generating yeah. a lot of power. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, yeah, clips all the way. Clips all the way. Yeah. Uh, David Grant, I sometimes find myself coming into a corner too fast. Me too. All the time. Um, and I skid around it to get through. M me too. <laughs> me, yeah. um, how can I avoid doing this um, if it's too late to slow down before the turn? Well, mm. you've got the same problem as me, yeah, as Blake. As me. A lot of us who aren't as quick as the top guys, um, you're coming in too quick. You are, yeah. You've got to adjust your speed before that, the turn. Yep. Um, if you're skidding through the turn, then you've, you've, you have left it too late. Always going for the yeah. fun side of things. Yeah, I mean, skidding through a turn yeah. is great fun, but if you want to increase your speed, you want to sight that corner sooner yeah. um, and adjust your speed accordingly. The fast guys, they're fast because they're yeah. judging their speed and holding it through them corners. And picking their, cor they're yeah. picking their lines. Yeah, so that's the secret. Exactly. And to help you with that, why don't we throw you to our video on how to get around corners fast. Check it out. Riding corners fast on a mountain bike can be quite hard, a little bit risky, but it is a lot of fun when you nail it. So this is how to ride corners fast. Uh, Gray and white. Um, I ride uh, as I ride. My discs tend to rub. Um, oh, that can be annoying. Very. My bike has QR axle, and I'm over 100 kilograms. And my front row is 180. Lots of information. There is a lot of information. Any ideas why? Oh, what well, your QR? Make sure your wheel is in the fork properly, because it could be slumped yeah. down and it's rubbing that way. Yeah. If it isn't, then spin your wheel. See if the disc is a little bit wobbly, and if it is. Yeah, there's special tools that you can bend your disc yeah. around to manipulate it into straight yeah. or bend it with your fingers. If not, loosen off your caliper, spin the wheel, hit the, hit the front brake, and wheel, that caliper will go into the right place and then lock it up and hopefully that will work. 
Good advice. Um, Graham White's got another co uh, question here. Um, a lot of my riding is off-road paths and bridleways. Would I be better to have one expensive bike, um, e.g. an enduro bike over yeah. 3,000 yeah. pounds, or two cheaper bikes, uh, an XC and a trail enduro, both at about 1,500 pounds each? Oh, okay. Wow. Well, what would you go with, Blake? I would go with one bike. Would you? Yes, because then you can just one bike can do it all. An enduro bike can go uphill and downhill. Yeah, I think that's the right advice, but I personally would go with two bikes. Oh, yeah. Just for the fun of having the Feeling choice to go and job. buy two yeah, bikes. Yeah, yes. That I'm is gonna good. Have that one. <laughs> I'm going to have that one. I'm going to have that one. So, that is good. Yeah, but I think what Blake said. Okay, uh, Mason Gallagher. Uh, Hi, after I washed my bike uh, with just a hose and a gentle stream, my headset bearings became creaky. Oh. Anything you can do to fix it? Well,. If you've washed your bike, it sounds like you could have open, open bearings. Yeah. So if you're confident, yeah. take it apart yourself, clean it out, re-grease it and put it together. But if you're not, I guess take it to your local bike shop. Yeah, get it serviced because you don't want a creaky headset. No. Um, it probably sounds like one of those things if it's creaking, it'll probably get worse. Yeah. So get it sorted yeah. out. Amber Adams is asking, uh, can you explain what tokens, stroke spaces are and how to install them in your fork? Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Right, these are just basically little plastic things that go in your suspension that help with the performance of your shock. But Neil's done a video all about this and he's got great information to check it out. If you put a bigger air volume spacer in there, it's gonna make that fork or shock more progressive. I really like that because I quite like my fork to be really progressive so that when I'm hitting big berms, things like that, I'm not sinking all the way into that travel. I'm actually staying up a little bit higher. So let's have a look at how you actually change those. Okay, James McCormick is heading off to the Alps this summer, Lucky Blake. guy. Lucky dude. Yeah. Um, he rides a hardtail at the moment, but he's thinking of getting a full sus when he upgrades. Ooh. So, right. where he's Good going idea. would be great for a downhill bike, um, so he could rent one of those. Yeah. But should he rent an enduro bike that would mm. still work at that trail yeah. centre, yeah. um, but also he'd be testing what would be a potential buy in the future. So, mm -hmm. what do you think about that? Well, to be honest, I would... I would rent an enduro bike. Yeah. Because you can go further if you want to go on a longer ride. You're not going to do that on a downhill bike when you're in the Alps, and there's a lot there to explore. Yes. So I'm going to say enduro bike. Yeah, and because I a think, downhill bike is. Yeah, an enduro bike these days, you're going to be able to do all of the downhill rides. Yeah, you can do all of it. They're yeah. so capable. Yeah. Um, you see so many people now at um, uh, trail parks with big downhill yeah. runs. All on enduro exactly, bikes. Exactly, yeah. So, but the downhill bike's going to be so limiting, and mm. you're unlikely to be going from a hardtail straight, straight to a downhill to a bike. Because so, you won't like it. Get that enduro testing in, and have a great holiday. Yeah, have fun. Yeah. Um, Tim Salem says, hey guys, um, I've just started the conversion to tubeless. What, just then? Um, but find air keeps leaking out where the valve meets the rim. Any Ooh. suggestions yes. how to prevent it? Yes. Well, when you're doing your tape to convert to tubeless, you put a hole through where the valve goes. You don't want to make that hole too big because it uh, is going to leak out. But if yeah. it is too big, clean it out, take the tire off, clean it out, re-tape it, as in just over the valve hole, and put a little hole and then put it back through. Hopefully right. that will work. If not, re-tape the whole thing, start all over again. Start again. Um, yeah. That's a good question though. I don't know much about tubeless. Mm. I've, nev I've never actually fitted a tubeless tire. Have you, I did the same no. mistake. No, that's so, why. Yeah, it's, there. it's a tricky conversion. Yeah. So yeah. good luck with it. Ash Brown wants to know what's the advantages or disadvantages of ball head Allen keys? Oh, well I use both, but with a ball joint one, you can get in from a different angle, can't you? Like you, if you can't get in from the top, obviously, you can get in from the side. But when you're working that Allen key, the ball one from top, you're not going to get as a snug a fit you would with one with no ball. Yes. Plus the ball ones kind of wear out quite quickly. Now before we get ourselves into trouble with all this uh, gesturing and yeah. balls and things, let's take a look at Pro Mechanic's favourite tools. Yes. Speed of T-handled Allen key. Uh, press. T9 turbo. Using you your Allen keys. Arc tools, multi tool. Pressure gauge. Okay, quick fire round. Blake, are you ready? <laughs> yes. Tim Parker's starting us off with uh, how do you have a good game of bike when the group you're in has got a massive range of abilities? Pick on their weaknesses. Good answer. Uh, Angel Smile, uh, do you do shipment to Abu Dhabi? Yes, we do. Rob Liker, I just graduated and ordered myself a Canyon Stitch. Congratulations. Nice treat. Uh, my question, how do you modify your stitch from street riding 101 to fit front brake? Want to get those endos down? Oh, well, that bike doesn't come with a front hub that can take a disc. So you're going to change that and buy a front disc. 
prank. Jo yeah, good answer. Joseph Slater, do you think you could do a bike giveaway? Yes, we can. Try. In the future, we hope In the we future, we to. will. He was committing us a long way. No, we, yeah. yeah, we hope to. Uh, Ian Ryer says, I'm 13. I'm wondering if I should get a full suspension or hardtail. I want to race XC, but I still want to have a bike that's not limited. Right, get a short travel. XC bike, full suspension. Yeah, great idea. Andrew Davis, in videos the bikes are always super clean and look almost new. Um, even after I wash my bike, it still has dirt in the components and places you can't get to. Well, I spend hours cleaning my bike, so probably spend more time cleaning your bike. Yeah. Getting yeah. all those nooks just, and crannies. Just more work. Uh, Lanko Christoph says, hi from Bulgaria. Hi. Um, where are the other guys when only one person is presenting an Ask GMBN? Having fun out there. Yeah, Neil is literally out riding his bike on right that hill now. right now. Yep. He's trying to get through that really muddy section is. on the Fort William track. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck, Neil. Um, All-terrain biking grid. Hello from California, um, where he lives. He wants to race in Jury. Where should he start? Start at your local club. See if there's a local club or an event that's going on in your area. That's where I would start. Yeah. Um, Will Young is running a 1x9 on a trail bike. Is that dumb? Mm, no, depending on how much you want to spend on your drive chain. I don't think it's dumb. No. One by nine is cool. Sean Pep wants to know, I was just wondering what handlebar stem is Blake running on his Scott Genius? Well, I am running a Syncross XM 1.5 35mm stem and a FR 1.5 bar Syncross again. Cut down to 760. That much. A little bit smaller. Okay, time for, correct me if I'm wrong. Ooh. And we're going to start with this one from Xavier Allen, who's doing some jumping, and how can he improve it? So take a look at this, Blake. Yeah. Here What's he comes. Tabletop. Nice little tabletop to jump. It's got the correct it's speed. Coming in at speed. Yeah. Well, that looks, there's nothing really wrong about that. Yeah, I guess it's, if you, it's not too wrong, it's I guess. It's not that wrong. No. Slightly static on the takeoff. Yeah, um, bend those knees a little bit more, I guess. And yeah, but it was... To go higher, just... You know, compress more. It's looking pretty good. I always think if you're riding tabletops like that, the one way to really improve is ride lots of different jumps. Yeah. Um, so you might different find that you're just stuck on, stuck on one jump um, and you're thinking, am I getting any better? But the way you're going to get confident on that jump is to start trying some other things. Yeah. And then you've got some relatability between those different exactly. situations, different takeoff angles, landings. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So uh, your tabletops are looking good. That is Maybe try nothing wrong time there. to try some different ones. Yeah. Okay, next up now, I really apologise, I can't say uh, this guy's name. I can't so even I, I, say it either. I, I, I'm not sure what to say, but <laughs> we know that you want to improve your manually and through these rollers. Yes. So take a look at this, Blake. Um, here right. we go. Nice rollers. Yeah, nice rollers. Oh, oh his te pretty, his technique, technique is there. Yeah, yeah, his technique is there. Yeah. First thing I can see is his front wheel's a little bit high, so you want to keep that front wheel a little bit low, so before you get to take off, don't take it fully up press your knees and then push down with your back wheel into that roller and then push forward on the bars to match the second roller. Because when you came out, you kind of did that. That kind of slows you down and put you in a funny, weird angle. So get that and put that front wheel down quick. Good advice. Or like that. And that is the end of Correct Me If I'm Wrong and the end of Ask for this week. Um, yes. Thanks for sending in your questions. Don't forget to leave us questions down below this video in the comments uh, for next week's show, and we'll do our best to answer those. Keep the questions coming on ask at gmbn.com and on the hashtag askgmbn. Yes. Yeah, now if you want to see some more videos from GMBN, then why don't you click over there to see flats versus clips, or clips oh. versus flats. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and click over here for Fort William Tech. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. And Don't forget to click this globe right here and you won't miss another video or another Ask GMBN ever again. Yeah, and uh, one thing you could do right at the end, just do us a favour, give us a thumbs up give like. Thumbs up like.